from uh, it'll, the uh, covers the dogs. And uh, Mike, uh, good afternoon. I have a feeling <laughs> uh, you've been reminded of all the comments that you've been making about Alabama these last uh, nine or ten months. I'm sure you're probably sick of reading your mentions, aren't you? Not really. I said the quarterback that played the best would win, and I thought that's what Jalen Milrow did, uh, Paul. I mean, I thought he outplayed Carson Beck in the Well, that, that's, that, that's not exactly what I was referring to, Mike. I was referring to oh, comments okay. that you had made uh, in the aftermath of, of, of DeBoer's hiring when uh, you said Alabama is now a second-tier team and that Kirby Smart is uh, not thinking too much about Alabama. Yeah, in March, he really wasn't. In March, I think he was focused on Georgia's spring drills and the players that he had to replace, and you saw why. You know, they lost three top 100 guys out of the secondary, and they were shredded uh, by a 17-year-old freshman, Ryan Williams. And, you know, I knew Ryan Williams was a great recruit, but if you told me he'd be the best receiver in the country in the month of September, I don't think I'd have believed that a 17-year-old would do the things that Ryan Williams has done. Uh, you know, he was outstanding the other night. Uh, never felt like Georgia was going to win that game. I think that was a lot of wishful thinking uh, by Georgia fans. I mean, the comeback, I mean, give them credit. Uh, five of five on fourth downs in the second half. That's great. But it just felt like we were one mill row miracle pass away from Alabama coming back. And that's exactly what they did. Um, you know, we saw Jalen uh, complete a miraculous pass last year to beat Auburn. Um, had some mistakes leading up to that. But in the end, his talent was able to overcome uh, what I thought was inadequate offensive coaching last season. And now you put him with a coach that knows how to coach a quarterback. Uh, obviously, uh, Kalen DeBoer does. We see Michael Penix as a first-round pick. And you see Jalen Milrow's talents blossom. And you just kind of wonder, you know, wow, what what might have been, you know, last year uh, if this guy had this sort of leadership and this sort of offensive set around him? Because they destroyed Kirby Smart. But, but it wasn't just Jalen Milrow. It'd be easy to sit here and say, uh, that Alabama you, you know, won because you know, they had Mike, a By the way, we, we talked a lot about Alabama. I'm actually really interested in Georgia right now because that's the program that okay. many of us are, are, are debating and yeah. trying to figure out. And you cover that team, and you've been very high on that team. Uh, it's almost seeming like uh, they could do no wrong for a very long time, and now it doesn't seem like uh, you feel that way. I picked them to win by three points against Alabama, Paul. I don't know if that's not doing anything wrong. Well, Mike, uh, let's quit were... equivocating and talking about things that don't matter. I'm trying to talk about this this program, uh, this program that you have built up, uh, and now it, it seems like it can't <laughs> it, it can't beat Alabama to save its life. Yeah, I wish I wish I had gotten paid like I was the one that built Georgia up to win 42 straight regular season games and. Uh, 28 straight SEC games, which was a record, and go undefeated three straight regular seasons. I wish I could take credit for building that program up. As it turns out, I'm just a guy that talked about all their accomplishments. And and now we got to talk about a team that needs to find an offensive identity. Uh, you know, Mike Bobo put Carson Beck out there, and, uh, you know, he couldn't have drawn the play up any better. But, you know, if your guy drops a 48-yard pass and he's a senior and you got a freshman on the other side going for 177, that tells me you've got a problem with your ability to develop or recruit wide receivers. So let's start there and let's talk about a very, very ordinary receiving core uh, and how that's affected Carson Beck. You know, he's lost confidence. He doesn't have Brock Bowers and Larry Zakaki out there uh, or a number one defense like Stetson Bennett had. Uh, he's got to throw to a bunch of mediocre receivers. I mean, George's best receiver was the second best receiver at Missouri two years ago. That, that's where it's at, okay? So that's number one, is they're somewhat lacking in explosivity at the receiver position. We That's not a newsflash. And, uh, you know, Carson threw for 436. We knew the Alabama secondary was a weakness. That's not a newsflash either. I, I don't expect Vanderbilt to exploit that or many other teams. But fact of the matter is, Georgia wasn't good enough at wide receiver to match Alabama blow for blow. Uh, so we'll start there. Defensively, uh, Glenn Schumann is a guy that's celebrated as somebody's next head coach, but he wasn't prepared for five wide. And, and Kirby Smart said that Georgia was unprepared. They were out prepared by Kalen DeBoer's brand new staff and only their fourth game. Uh, you don't hear about Georgia being unprepared too often, but the head coach called it out, said they had to settle down into some defenses they could execute. OK, that's putting the staff on notice. They didn't do a good job, Paul. Uh, so you've got an unexplosive wide receiving core. You've got poor scheming but, but Griff, by the let's, coaches. Let's blame everyone but the twelve, the thirteen million dollar man, uh, Kirby Smart, who knows a little bit about defense. If he saw something he didn't like, I'm sure he could walk over to that side of the ball. So, what what are you really telling us? I, I'm interested in the, the state of this program. I've heard criticism of Glenn Schumann. Uh, I've heard sure. criticism of, of Mike Bobo. I haven't heard any criticism of the head football coach. 
Well, I mean, he is the head coach and, you know, it's his job to have him prepared. And, you know, I think, you know, myself, along with a lot of other people, we just assumed because Kirby had won 21 straight coming off a of bye week that he would make it 22. Uh, but instead, a, a team went into that stadium that wasn't prepared for Jalen Milrow, uh, one of the best performances I've personally ever seen uh, a guy perform and just take over a game. And Ryan Williams. Uh, you know, they weren't prepared for that. They didn't scheme for that. Uh, they weren't able to execute the one-on-one -on -one tackles. George's best defender, Malachi Starch, you had him on this program last week. Uh, he wasn't able to get Milrow down in the open field. Uh, Kirby Smart recruited all those players, Paul. He hired all these coaches. So you're going to have to blame him uh, for that loss in the last 43 regular season games. Absolutely, Kirby takes the blame for uh, seeing that 28-game SEC win streak snapped. I think you need to put it all on him. Okay, I'm glad you did. I, I hated to work so hard to get you to do that, but apparently I, <laughs> that's part of my job. Um, I guess so. Let's move on to some other uh, – I was down in Auburn. I'm curious uh, your impressions uh, as the Tigers move over to Athens uh, of where Hugh Freeze's program is right now and what the future looks like. What, what are you, the Grim Reaper or something? They're sending you to all these campuses where these coaches' careers are going up in flames? It has been that kind of uh, a season so far. <laughs> it does appear to be the case. Uh, look, Hugh Free said that, that Auburn could be 5-0. and oh. I mean, he, he really did say that. <laughs> they turned the ball over 11 times in their last three games, and, you know, they got the worst turnover margin among all the Power 4 schools. Now, if they clean that, you know, big ifs. we got to play the if game, right? We got to play the if game. If Auburn cleans it up, we know they outgained Oklahoma. We know they had more first, all that stuff. Fact is, Auburn played George within seven points last year when <laughs> Georgia had Brock Bowers and Lad McConkey. So Hugh Freeze has beaten Kirby Smart before, albeit at Ole Miss. But I, listen, I don't think you assume anything in the SEC, Paul. I really don't. Um, I think Georgia's got to go out there. They got to get right. They got to get an offensive identity. They got to get their confidence back. I mean, there was some shell shock there. Uh, granted, they did stage a, a ferocious comeback, but again, moral victories, you know, that, that may work at other places. But as you said, Kirby Smart's the highest paid coach in the country, and he's expected to win all of his games. And they're going to be expected to beat Auburn. They beat him the last seven times in a row in the series. There's going to be a hungry Georgia crowd. There's going to be a desperate Auburn team. It's going to come down to who makes mistakes. If Georgia makes more mistakes than Auburn, Auburn's got a shot. Uh, but if Auburn continues these turnover ways, then this is a game Georgia will win in blowout fashion. Meanwhile, uh, one of our colleagues, Pat Forty, called Lane Kiffin this week an unserious head coach. Uh, Kiffin gets a lot of praise, very little criticism. Where are you on Lane Kiffin after a nasty loss to Kentucky? I think I've been pretty consistent on Lane Kiffin, you know, throughout from the time I covered him at Tennessee. I mean, I think he's an incredibly talented guy with a great offensive mind. I think you always wonder about his locker rooms. Last year, it worked out well at the end of the year. The year before, not so well. When you've got this many transfers, there's a lot to manage when there is, um, you know, some adversity. And losing by three points at home to Kentucky and only scoring 17 points with all that NFL talent. I wonder if Florida fans still want to hire Lane. I mean, they can hire anybody to lose to Kentucky, much less score 17 points at home with NFL talent. But that's what happened last week. And, and this is interesting because they go to South Carolina and Shane Beamer, maybe the most mysterious of all coaches. I mean, certainly one of the most likable. But when you look at his record and some of the teams they've beaten, I mean, they've beaten three of the six top 15 teams they've played in Beamer's tenure as underdogs. And here they are, a nine-point underdog in Columbia again. Now, does the cream rise to the top? And does Lane Kiffin and, and his offensive arsenal simply overcome South Carolina? Or is there something to the Gamecocks? They did beat Kentucky 31-6 to and, and played a very valiant effort game against LSU before losing um, in somewhat controversial fashion. So this is a real separator game. I heard you mention uh, Missouri at Texas A&M. This is another game. I mean, Eli Drinkwitz, a guy that, you know, you've heard rumblings that he's trying to shop himself around and get a better job. Oh, he whoa, needs whoa, to win whoa, this whoa, game. Whoa, hold, on, hold, hold on a second. Elaborate on what? that. Shopping himself well, I, around. I think Eli. I, I think Eli Drinkwitz is a marketable coach, and I think he. No, knows no, that's that not. Missouri's... I, I, I'm aware he's a marketable coach, but you act like Eli Drinkwitz just bought an hour on the Home Shopping Network. What, what exactly are well, you talking about get... there? <laughs> let's not get carried away. I mean, well, you know, I, I, like, hey, he is... you're the one who said it. I was sitting here calmly listening and when you said, and I think I'm quoting you correctly. Uh, there, there's rumblings that Eli Drinkwitz is rumblings. shopping himself around. There's been, there has been talk that, that he is a guy that would be interested in being the Florida head coach. Yes, we have heard that. There are sources out there. 
uh, that, that say that he would be interested. I, I don't know if that would be a, a good move for him when I look at how Missouri has this NIL collective and all the support that he has there and the way these players are playing. And I don't necessarily think it's imminent either. I'm just saying, I think if you want to look at the long-term future, um, you might understand why Drink would want, would want to cash in on his hand at Missouri. I mean, he's done an unbelievable job there, uh, but can they sustain that success? And we're going to we're gonna find out when they go to A&M. Now, they did get by Vanderbilt in double overtime. They're coming off a bye week, and now they play Mike Elko. I think he's won a few games in a row, and he's trying to prove himself a good hire. Uh, so this is a real interesting matchup, you know, kind of a loser out. The winner stays in contention for the SEC. The loser, you know, starts looking for their secondary bowl plans in Florida. <laughs> Which is where Billy Napier plays uh, UC- UCF this weekend as an as a home underdog. So, you know, this is the fourth straight, I believe, fourth straight home game. Florida's been an underdog, if I'm not mistaken. You can hear the dogs barking. They're still upset here. Four straight home games that they've been an underdog. I think Florida's going to win this game. I had a chance to talk to Billy Napier on the SEC teleconference, and well, he really understands quarterback management. I think he's going with the right guy and Graham Mertz, and I think that Florida's going to beat UCF and try to take a step in Mertz, the right did you, direction. Did you bet your paycheck on that game? I mean, does this dog not get lunch in the afternoon? What's going on there? That's right. They don't get they don't get fed. They don't. You know, when I mean, Georgia I, loses, I mean, I mean Georgia loses game, a game and you starve your dogs. Is that is that what it is? I, I'll say this. There are a lot of upset people in Athens. And, you know, the boat has been rocked. And this concept that the Kirby way is undefeated. But, you know, look, it's a reality check. You got what you got. You're only as good as the last players you bought. This could ultimately do Georgia a favor. Because there's a lot of boosters out there saying, where do we go get a guy like Ryan Williams? It's time to go in the portal and start paying. Is that, really uh, is that ridiculous uh, winning streak uh, that some of your fans are trying to propagate? Is that still in existence? Uh, because maybe you just you, you say uh, uh, you have a forty whatever game winning streak other than Alabama. Oh no, I don't think so. Okay, but I, I, I just want to make sure I didn't. I, I, do I didn't think hear the twenty six. Yeah, the twenty six game home win streak is intact. One oh, okay. that, by the way, doesn't include Alabama, which has not played in Athens. Right. Which, if, if, thank the conference schedule makers in Birmingham, it'll finally happen next year. Now, I don't know that Nick Saban ever had to play Kirby here. I think he was able to. Yeah, he did. Uh, he played. Well, he, played he played Kirby there, but he played Mark Rick in, in, yeah. in Sanford. Right. Yeah, yeah he didn't play in Sanford time. Stadium against in the last eight or nine one, years. One, I mean, one, both of them, if my memory is correct. But 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 next year Alabama will come here and, and it'll be interesting oh, yeah. to see who's Alabama the fans are I mean, already nervous about that game. <laughs> but I, well, I mean, here's what I'd be nervous about: if you lose Jalen Milrow, the season goes in the tank. I mean, they're a one man show. Oh, okay. Did you see the way that guy dominated? Do you think he's going to carry 16 times in every game? I well, think just, he is it, it is just unfair that Alabama could have such a great player like Jalen Milrow. I, I mean, um, well, and, and a great coach like Kalen DeBoer. Look, yeah, I mean, can you? Ca- I, I'd you like to. I'd like to go back to the recruiting of uh, of Carson Beck and Jalen Milrow and see who got more stars. Maybe Georgia would be better off if Carson had actually signed at Alabama because then Jalen wouldn't be there. Remember, Carson was an Alabama commitment. I say that in jest. Obviously, Georgia believes in Carson Beck. They love the guy. You know, they paid him a lot of NIL money. They believe he's a first-round pick, and they saw the way that he came back in the second half. So the Georgia fans all in on Carson Beck. This is their guy. He waited three years to be a starter. He's a program guy. Mike Bobo's had two years to develop him, and now he's just got to sick him. The second half of the season, because the dogs, Paul, I think they got to take two out of three against Ole Miss, Tennessee, and Texas to make the college football playoff. I'm not sure a three-loss Georgia would get in the playoff. No, I think you're. Uh, that's the one thing I agree with you on during this conversation, Mike. Go feed the dog. <laughs> uh, if you're out of money, uh, we'll do a GoFundMe. Uh, we, we got a couple extra bucks around the studio. Mike Griff is joining us on this Thursday afternoon to get us started.